Retrosynthesis with amines is going to be what we cover in this lesson. And uh, this is the last major function group we're covering in the entire organic chemistry course, both semesters here. And so now when we finally get to retrosynthesis, you have all of the reactions at your disposal. And this can seem a little daunting. So we're going to work four examples and show you how to approach it. And obviously, when you're doing retrosynthesis in the context of amines, you should definitely keep your amine, uh, both syntheses and reactions in mind. Uh, but you can't forget everything that came before here. We'll probably use a little bit of everything uh, as we go here. Now, this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm posting these lessons weekly throughout the school year. This might be the last lesson in the whole playlist, although later on, I'll probably add a, a whole chapter on carbohydrates uh, somewhere down the road. Uh, but if you want to be notified every time I do post a new lesson, whether it be in the carbohydrate section sometime this summer or in my next playlist, uh, I've got biochemistry on the horizon. Uh, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so here's our first retrosynthesis here, and it's not difficult to see where our carbons match up. We got seven carbons here, and here we've got an eighth carbon right here. We definitely know that somewhere along the way, we're gonna have to make this bond right here. That's obvious, uh, but where to go from there? So we gotta think about all the different ways you know of making uh, amines. This is a primary amine that might come to mind, and you know some different ways to approach this. Uh, let's just go for a multitude of ways here. So we could potentially make this by reducing let's make that look a little better a nitrile we could get this by also reducing the corresponding azide as well we could get this by reducing the corresponding amide And all of these would be accomplished, uh, accomplished with lithium aluminum hydride in this case. So lots of ways to make this amine. We could potentially also try and accomplish this being that it's a primary amine through the Gabriel synthesis. And if we're gonna try and accomplish this through the Gabriel synthesis, be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but what you end up starting with uh, to make your amine is the corresponding alkyl halide. So in this case, one, two carbons and a halogen. Uh, before you add, you know, phthal uh, phthalamide and things of that sort. So, uh, you know, kind of where we'd have to get to, though, uh, along the way. So these are some of our options here. We got to ask ourselves, well, which of these are probably going to be the easiest to make? Well, in this case, I've got seven carbons. And if I look at all these, okay, they all got the extra carbon. And so the question is, how do we get that extra carbon there? Well, obviously we had to make a carbon-carbon bond somewhere along the way, but the very, very, very first carbon-carbon bond you ever learned to make was in an SN2 reaction involving cyanide. And it was a really minor point that you made a carbon-carbon bond at the point because once we got to like Grignards and acetylides, uh, we had much more powerful ways of making carbon-carbon bonds, but that was the first one. And so you've got seven carbons and now you've got eight where the eighth one is cyanide and you know how to make that carbon-carbon bond. It's the first carbon-carbon bond you ever learned to make. And if we take a look here, you make it in an SN2 reaction, which would have meant you needed a good leaving group. And I'm definitely in synthesis. I always recommend using that bromine because you know how to put bromines on in a multitude of ways. Uh, and you just simply add sodium cyanide and a good polar A-product solvent like DMSO or acetone or something. Uh, and that would get it there. And the question from there, it's like, oh, well, I'm kind of almost there. And this is just brominating on the benzylic position. We have a special reagent for that. And so in this case, I was going to kind of try and work all these, but this one just got too easy, too fast. And we're just going to use NBS and either light heat or peroxide. Uh, and in this case, we're done. NBS, his job is to specifically brominate uh, benzylically or allylically, in this case, benzylically. And that's it. It's just a three-step synthesis. And I guess we should fill in the reagent here. Uh, once again, that was lithium aluminum hydride followed by H3O+. So that's the most obvious synthesis, but it's definitely not the only option. Now, the question is, how could we do something like this? Well, the uh, only way you know how to make an azide at this point is also SN2. And so we'd have to have the two carbons already and then NaN3. And that doesn't look like the easiest thing to get to, to get to an alkyl halide that already has the other carbon added, that has the bromine out here. And getting a bromine out there is not the easiest thing in the world. The only way you know how to pull that off is anti-Markovnikov addition across an alkene. So you'd be using like HBr 
and peroxide. And we're already one, two, three steps into getting to our product. And we still got a long way to go to get from here to here. We have to add an extra carbon and form an alkene. And I'm just gonna rule this out. It's too many steps. Could we eventually get there? Yeah, I think we could. It's probably gonna be 10 or 12 steps. Mm, yeah, not gonna happen. All right. So then we look at the amide here. And to get the amide here, um, we've learned, uh, you know, really uh, one major way to make amides. And that is through uh, nucleophilic acyl substitution with a bunch of the different carboxylic acid derivatives and stuff like this. So you could make an amide most commonly through the corresponding acid chloride. So and in this case, just adding two equivalents of ammonia. So with an acid chloride, let's get that chlorine looking better. So you need two equivalents of your amine. In this case, it's just plain old ammonia, and that would get you there. And you can make the acid chloride from the corresponding carboxylic acid. SOCl2 get you there. And so the question is, can we make a carboxylic acid with one more carbon than what we started with? And that should make, have a bell going off in your head. Making a carboxylic acid with one more carbon than we have, that's Grignard addition to carbon dioxide. It's one way to pull that off. The other way to pull that off is actually you can do hydrolysis of a, a nitrile. You just do H3O plus right here to get you there. But that would make it one, two, and then three four, five, six steps, not better than one we have. But again, we could also do this with Grignard addition to CO2. So in your Grignard, would have to be this guy. And we can make that Grignard from the corresponding alkyl halide. And we know how to put that there with NBS, but a lot longer than the synthesis we already came up with. So one, two, three, four, five, six steps. So let's get that lithium aluminum hydride in there as well, which I'll abbreviate LAH. And all of a sudden now we've got one best synthesis and everything we come up with. That's the first one we did here. One, two, three steps going through that nitrile. So Again, with all the reactions you know at this point, odds are from just about any synthesis you're gonna see, there's probably a multiple, multitude of ways to do it. Uh, but in this case, we definitely clearly in everything we could come up with have one best way. And again, could we go this route? We could, but again, making this, we already decided was gonna be difficult in another synthesis, so probably not gonna try it up there either. So if we take a look at this next example here, once again, it's not difficult to see how the uh, carbon atoms in our reactant match up with the product. We got our six-membered ring right here. Well, that must be this six-membered ring right here. We're definitely going to have to make this bond right here, which means that one of our reactants on the right here probably was a secondary amine, but our product here is a tertiary amine. And you might recall that pff, bell's going off. Reductive amination converts amines to, uh, you know, amines as well that are just one degree more substituted. So if I wanted to turn a secondary amine into a tertiary amine, that's what we could accomplish with reductive amination. Now, if we kind of take a look at what would need to happen here, so with reductive amination, so we'd be adding our secondary amine here. With our reducing agent, which could be catalytic hydrogenation or again, really common here, the sodium cyanoborohydride. Uh, and that would be adding it to the corresponding ketone aldehyde, in this case, ketone. So there's your reductive amination step, which means we just need to make this guy. So and in this case, making a ketone from an alkene. So, well, odds are just making the ketone from the corresponding alcohol, oxidizing it using chromic acid or PCC. And then this is just going to be uh, hydration, and we could do it Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov since both sides are equally substituted and both would essentially be this. Uh, it doesn't matter if you choose acid catalytic hydration, oxymercuration, demercuration, or hydroboration oxidation. Totally doesn't matter. Well, I'm going to do acid catalyzed hydration, so dilute H2SO4, or sometimes you can put the water there, but if you say dilute, it's kind of implied that it's in water. So, and there's your synthesis. One, two, three steps and we don't have so much for alternatives. And I'm gonna say at the beginning of this lesson that reductive amination when you're doing synthesis in the context of amines, super common one to incorporate. And in this case, really the only viable route we have.
All right, so this next example, it might be a little more challenging to see what's going on here, but we can definitely match up one, two, three, these four carbons, one, two, three, four, with these four carbons, one, two, three, four, but then this carbon is bonded to the nitrogen, whereas over here, this carbon's bonded to a carbonyl, so, and then the nitrogen, which means we're gonna have to lose this carbonyl for one, and we're definitely gonna have to form this bond somewhere along the way as well. Well, what's nice is with amide here, and that's what we're starting with as an amide, uh, we know how to lose that carbonyl. So in this case, we've got two options here. If we used lithium aluminum hydride, followed by H3O+, plus, we would lose the oxygen, but we would not lose the carbonyl. What we need to do is the Hoffman rearrangement to lose that carbonyl in the process. And that is with either sodium hypobromite, NaOBr, or Br2 hydroxide, most common uh, set of reagents used. And now, we're gonna end up with this amine. That carbonyl is completely removed in the rearrangement. So uh, we do know how to get this far, and then how do we convert this amine and bond it to this other carbon group as well. Well, notice right now we have a primary amine. We want to, in the end, end up with a secondary amine. And again, bells should be going off in your house. You want to turn an amine into something that's one degree more substituted, good chance you're doing reductive amination. And so from here, we work it backwards and we say, okay, if I was doing reductive amination here, and this is the bond I have to make in that reductive amination, well, then I definitely want this as the amine, and then we're gonna use, this is my ketone, and we'd add it to the ketone along with sodium cyanoborohydride to get there. Cool, so now in the last example, we looked at uh, reductive amination from the perspective of the ketone as the reactant. So, but now we're looking at it from the perspective of the amine as the reactant, but it's totally analogous. You can either add the amine to the ketone or the ketone to the amine in the presence of sodium cyanoborohydride here. All right, so that's gonna get us there. And then I just realized, oh, which means I just had to get to this amine, which we were at. So let's just take this arrow and make it a little longer and realize that this synthesis was a whole lot shorter than we thought. It's just a two-step synthesis. It looks way more complicated than that, but it really is just a two-step synthesis. All right, last one here, and this one's gonna be a little bit of a challenge here. So here we got nitrobenzene, and obviously I know where the six carbons of benzene match up on my product, So, but I need to get those three bromines added. Also, this NO2 has got to go. Well, there's no like denitration reaction. You guys have learned sulfonation and desulfonation. We know how to, you know, to reverse uh, putting on a sulfonate group, but not with a nitro group. So uh, in this case, you don't have that reaction. What you do know though, is the one thing you can turn that nitro group into is an amine group. And you've got a whole host of Sandmeyer reactions, including turning it into a hydrogen that are possible. So rather than work this backwards for a second, um, we're gonna work one step forward because at some point you're gonna have to do this. We could just consider trying to add a couple of those bromines from the get-go, right? So this guy's a meta director. So you could potentially get you know, bromines in these two positions, but once you got the bromines in these two positions, even if you turn this into a hydrogen, you're never gonna get another bromine right there, as is those two bromines that would be in these two positions are ortho para directors, and they would fill other positions with a bromine, not this one. So uh, in this case, we will turn this into an amine group. Whether or not that needs to happen first or not will be uh, revealed in just a sec, as we'll see. Uh, and in this case, to pull that off, we can do catalytic hydrogenation, or we learned that we can do like iron and a strong acid. You could just write H plus here, uh, and that's gonna reduce it. And, and again, you could use one of three metals here, iron, tin, or zinc with HCl. And again, you could have also just done like H2 and platinum catalytic hydrogenation. Now what's nice in this case, is that amine group is a strong electron donated group and it is an ortho para director. Uh, and so, and we do know how to eventually convert this into a hydrogen. And so what we could do is take advantage of this guy and I'm just gonna re redraw this just a little bit. So to match it up just ever so better with our final product, I'm just gonna rotate this thing ever, you know, sideways 30 degrees to get the NH2 group or maybe that's 60 degrees, uh, right at the top there. And I can see that if I go through and add three equivalents of Br2 
FeBr3 of the reagents normally for EAS bromination. Now, one thing you gotta remember though, with an amine, your acid catalyst will uh, turn your electron donating group into an electron withdrawing group. You'll end up with a nitrogen with a positive charge and it then becomes a meta director. Well, we don't want that then. And so often with amines, we just leave out the catalyst. This guy's such a activator anyways, we don't need the catalyst. And so we can just add the three equivalents of Br2 and end up So he's going to be the strongest, this amine group, the strongest director in all three cases. And he's going to end up with three equivalents, filling all his ortho and para positions. Well, now this guy needs to go. And to get him to go, i.e. to be converted back into a hydrogen, so we're going to go to those Sandmeyer reactions. And those Sandmeyer reactions started off with nitrous acid, which is commonly made from a combination of sodium nitrite and either HCl or HBr. Cool, and that reacting with this guy is gonna turn it into uh, one of those arine diazonium salts. And then to that arine diazonium salt, to convert it into a hydrogen, we use H3PO2. And so if we kind of look at what's going on after step one, there's your arine diazonium salt. And then H3PO2 replaces that with a hydrogen to get you to your final product. Cool, this is about as challenging of an example as I could give you. And notice I worked it forward, I didn't work it backwards. So nine times out of 10, retrosynthesis is all about working it backwards. So every once in a blue moon though, you're gonna struggle and start approaching it from the other side if you can and stuff. Um, but big key on this one is realizing that the NO2 is not in the product. And you only have one way to get that NO2 off there, i.e. replaced by a hydrogen, and that is through that Sandmeyer reaction. So you, the Sandmeyer reaction start with aniline, so you had to, con somewhere along the way you're gonna have to convert this. It didn't have to be first, but it turns out it works. Uh, and then into an arine diazonium salt, and then remove it. And the key was that if you just, you know, uh, you know, say we just, you know, removed it all together to, to begin with. So turned it into aniline and then did this step and just got plain old benzene. Well, if we have plain old benzene, getting three bromines in this orientation, no great way to pull it off. They're ortho pair directors, getting them all meta to each other, not going to happen. But as long as we did it before we removed the amine group, perfectly going to end up in exactly the positions we wanted. Cool. If you have found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? One of the best things you can do to promote the channel and help other students find this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes to this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems, if you're looking for my final exam rapid reviews, if you are looking for practice final exams, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.